and all that we are in worship, all that we have we worship, all that we know we lay aside, all that we are we worship, and all that we have we lay at your feet. We're getting good reports that people have been praying and we are so encouraged to hear that uh, people have been praying all over the country. People are praying. What, a, what an encouragement in a sense that uh, people have responded to the call of prayer. And uh, thank you so much, saints, for joining and uh, praying throughout uh, the day, 24-hour prayer. So, saints, we, we just want to thank God for you, for um, um responding positively and uh, and pray hallelujah so we we thank god really and uh, we know that god is is definitely uh, meeting our needs and god is answering our needs hallelujah i want to to take you back to one of the scriptures uh, today to take you back there so that we we uh, <clears throat> so that we can pray just take you back to one scripture Hallelujah. To take you back to one scripture which is uh, which we read this morning. Let us read that scripture then uh, after that then we, we begin our prayer. It's Proverbs chapter 10 verse 3. Proverbs 10 verse 3. You see amazing scripture. The Bible says the Lord will not allow the righteous soul the righteous soul to uh, um, uh, to, to famish. In other words, the Lord will not allow the righteous to go hungry. That's what it says. The Lord will not allow the righteous to go hungry. The Lord will not allow you to go hungry, my friend. Amazing scripture, an amazing affirmation here from uh, Solomon, that the Lord will not allow the righteous um, uh, go hungry. So here it is, saints, uh, the truth uh, which is in the word of God, that it doesn't matter um, how difficult the situation you are facing, but the truth is the Lord will not allow you to go hungry. What that means is that the Lord is hungry, you know. Uh, like I said in the morning, it's not only talking about food. When it says the Lord will not allow you to go hungry, it is also talking about the Lord will not allow you to embarrass you. The Lord will not allow you to not to have shelter. The Lord will not allow you not to have shelter. You see, if you're a child of God, God will not allow you to be a laughing stock. God will not allow you to be an embarrassment. That's what this word is saying. So if you're a child of the Most High God, you better be rest assured that God will not allow you, will not allow you to be an embarrassment. The Lord will not allow you to go hungry. Saints, we've been praying the whole day today praying for uh, the needs and there are so many other needs that came some prayer items that came later on and uh, we couldn't capture them and these prayer items keep on coming in fact as early as late as now 10 minutes ago some prayer items i'm told they kept on coming uh, uh <coughs> kept on coming i'm told here yeah, by my team that more and more prayer items kept on coming. Hallelujah. So here it is, saints. I just want to say to you, if you send your prayer items late, you, you don't have to worry. We, we've been praying on them. They may not be on the screen, but we've been praying about them. So the, the prayer items on the screen is a summary of all the prayer items, not necessarily a summary. We just put them into... Uh, um, one combined prayer item. So the prayer items that you sent are the ones you're on the screen that people have been praying for you throughout the day. And therefore, saints, we, we just want you to know, according to Mark chapter 11, the media is going to put that one, according to Mark chapter 11, verse 24, 11 verse 24, an amazing scripture. Let me read an amazing scripture there. Let me read it for you, hallelujah. But it's one of the scriptures that I love, hallelujah, hallelujah. You you will know it's one of the scriptures I love really because it makes some things very, very clear. That's what the scripture says, it says, therefore I say to you, therefore I say to you, 
Whatever things you ask when you pray, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Here, here it is now. Let me read again. Therefore, I say to you, this is Jesus now, talking to you and talking to me. He says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, when you pray again, this verse indicates that uh, not if we pray, but when we pray. In other words, Jesus expects that we should be praying. He says, whatever things that, that you ask for when you pray. See, here it is, saints, that God expects that we should be praying. He says, whatever things that we ask, of, ask for when we pray. Now, it doesn't matter. It could be some things that you think are big. It could be some things you think that are small. The Bible here says whatever. Whatever means whatever. It says whatever things. So I know that you wrote so many prayer items. Some of you wrote um, wrote about uh, healing of their brothers, healing of their sisters, healing of their parents, mothers and fathers. Some of you wrote about restoration of marriages. Some of you wrote about winning of the of the of the of the lost of the soul some of you wrote about the uh, business idea some of you wrote about the business growth some of you wrote about new jobs some of you wrote about promotion some of you wrote about pastories and some of you wrote about getting a school some of you wrote about um, uh, getting invested being accepted you know and, and all kinds of things some of you wrote about God helping them in the area of forgiveness. And, and there were a lot of things that uh, you saints wrote here. And, and the Bible says whatever things. So those things you wrote, they all are part of whatever. Whatever. He says whatever things you, you ask when you pray. When you pray. Then he says believe that you've received them. Here, here is now. Here's the thing now. Because here's the challenge now. Here's the challenge that me and you have right now. Because some of you, you know, now that you've prayed, you could imagine you've prayed all these hours praying for one and the same items. Now, you've got to believe. Now, he says, believe that you've received them. Now, what that means is that, that uh, what we've prayed for, now you better believe that God has answered that prayer. You better believe that not only has he answered that prayer, you better believe that God has intervened, that God has granted your request. Hallelujah. He, he says, says, believe that you've received them and you will have them. Now, you, know, you will have them. So now it starts, believe you receive them, then he says, you will have them. Now, if you re remove, look at that equation. The equation says, you ask when you pray. That's the first part of the equation. The second part of the equation, it says, believe. You see, you've received them. Then the third part, it says now, you will have them. You see that? Now, if you remove the middle part, what, what that does now is that you will not have the, the last part. Because the first part plus the middle part equals the last part. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. The first part, which is asking and praying, plus believing you receive them, equals having them. You see that? You've got to realize now that, that if you don't, if you don't follow this equation the way it is, you're going to miss out on what you have prayed for the whole day. Because the Bible says now, after praying, whatever you pray for, we've got we've to believe that you've received them. He says, when we believe you've received them, then he says, we will have them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So here he says, I, I believe that God has healed people. Amen. I believe that God's will is done and is being done on earth. I believe that uh, those who are sick are being healed. I, I believe that marriages are, are being restored. I believe, I believe that marriages are being restored in the name of Jesus. I believe that God has done great miracles. I believe that families have been restored. That's what I believe because I've prayed for it. Now I've got to wait now for the manifestation of what I've prayed and believe God. And the future on and off so, so here it is now, says, I just want to say to you now, now the only thing remaining for me and you now is to, is now to believe, is now to wait upon uh, uh, the manifestation 
of what we are believing God for. Hallelujah. Because we have prayed, we have prayed to God, and because we have prayed now, we have to believe that God has granted us our request. Somebody say hallelujah. So so it is things, it is like that. I want I want I want to take you now to Chronicles, and then we're gonna be praying right now. Hallelujah. We're gonna be praying um right now. We're gonna be praying. Let's go to Chronicles saints and just see something which is very important. First Chronicles, by the way, chapter four. Um chapter four, first chronicles, chapter four, verses ten. You see, verses 10. We did this. We did this. In fact, let's start from verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to verse 10. The Bible says there, it says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Uh, uh, this is now verse 9. First Chronicles chapter, 10, chapter 4, verse 9 and verse 10. Verse 9 reads, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain, saying, because I bore him in pain. Then he says, verse 10, and Jabez called on, on God of Israel, saying, in other words, he prayed, saying, all that you will bless me, all that you will bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me, and that you'll keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God, underline it, so God granted him what he requested. Hallelujah. That's what I want to say to you today, that God, God has granted all what you have requested, saints. You don't have to be shaken. All the prayers we've been praying for this last 24, uh, not 24 hours exactly, for the last couple of hours, God has answered all our prayers. I want you to know that without any shade of doubt that God has granted our request. All what we need to do now is to keep on waiting and, and, and knowing that God has granted our request. Hallelujah. That's what it means now is that you better believe that God has granted your request. Hallelujah. He has granted your request. So we're going to go ahead right now and thank him now for a few minutes. Just a few minutes before we go to our teaching of the day, just go on now and, and thank him for meeting all our requests, hallelujah, for answering all our prayers. Just thank him, just thank him. In fact, they're going to be putting that uh, those prayer needs on the slides. Uh, as they put them there, just thank him for all those items. Mm -hmm. Name them one by one in the next 10 minutes. That's what we're going to do naming them one by one, thanking God for meeting all those needs, restoring people's lives, restoring marriages. Uh, you know, God knows the names. We don't worry about the names. We also don't know the names, but God knows who are these people. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit was there when they were writing. He knows who are these people. Hallelujah. And, and, and so if you are the one who wrote a particular prayer, and you can see that when you pray, just thank God specifically for that. Just say, Lord, thank you. Thank him specifically for your item and thank him yeah. for others as well. But when you when you arrive, we point your prayer, Yako. Just uh, thank God. Hallelujah. So we're going to be going ahead, right ahead now and just thank God for answering our prayer. So can we do that? Hallelujah. Let us pray now. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We give you the praise of God. Nam Sanje and Kulukuluna Mandonke, my God, Siabong, Ugutu and Uguchehov, my God, our Shinch, our Kukogi, Umine Unapagat, Siabong, I give a big Amelia Chase again today, O Lord, at the end of the fifth day, my God, Signiges to Molonk, Signiges is a bongo talk, Kulukuluna Mandonke, my God, you are, you are such a faithful God, my God and, and my Father. We thank you, God. We bless you. We honor you, Lord. My God, in the last in the last few hours, oh God, we came before your throne, oh God. Bringing requests according to your way, to God. My God, Oh, 
Kolumbia na manda si kol, uchin Kolumbia na manda soba na kuhonge, kuhonge si kila. Sisi abonga ke, e kamili ka Jesus, Kolumbia na manda kuhonge, na namsha njenge kamili ka Jesus, moye nje, Kolumbia chwe kamili ka Jesus. My God, we've come before you, my God, praying, oh God, Kolumbia na manda bringing prayer items before you, bringing our requests before you, my God and my Father. Sisi abonga ke ba, e kamili ka Jesus, Kolumbia na manda kuhonge. By God, every item that we brought before you, my God, these items, oh God, my God, have been answered in the name of Jesus. My God, they come in the church. Jabez was a man like us. My God, Jabez was a man like us. My God, it is Jabez, he cried unto you. He cried unto you, Lord. Jabez, my God, he prayed unto you. And he cried unto you. Your word says, Oh my God, you granted him what he requested. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, again, oh God, today, just like Jabez, like Jabez, today, oh God, my God, we cried, my God, for restoration, restoration of marriages, my God, restoration of lives. My God, we cried, oh God. We cried, oh God, my God, for favor. We cried, oh God, for peace in our communities. My God and my Father, we cried, oh God. Baba, you know, we cried for peace. My God, we cried for wisdom. Father, we cried, oh God. Baba, you know, we cried, oh God, for financial breakthrough. We cried, oh God, for salvation of our families. My Father, my God, we cried, my God. Baba, you know, for business partners. For business growth and business ideas. My God, we cried, oh God. We cried for promotion, oh God. My God, today, oh God, we cried, oh God. My God, we cried today, oh God. Baba, we have brought all items before you. Baba, we cried for our mothers and our fathers for their salvation. My God and Father, we cried for our brothers and sisters. We cried. Baba for our brothers and sisters, for their salvation. So God, my God, we cried, oh God, for the destruction of strongholds. My God, Baba Ingwell, all my God, Baba Ingwell, all Baba Ingwell, Kulukrana satanic strongholds. My God, all strongholds, Baba Ingwell, which are not God. We cried for the destruction of the strongholds. Baba Ingwell, in our families. We cried, O oh God, Baba Ingwell, and Kulukura Manda, to may deliver our sisters and brothers from the demon of alcohol, my God, and drugs. And so, Lord, just like Jabez, Baba Ingwell, my God, you have granted us our request, that every request of God, my God, you have, you have granted us to us in the name of Jesus. Siabonga Gebab, Signiga Zutu, Signiga Zibong, Kulukura Manda, Siabonga Kulukura Manda. Sing Baba we cried, oh God. My God, that you may walk. My God, in sensitiveness. Baba we want to be sensitive. Baba to the Holy Spirit. My God and my Father, that my God, you are healing my God nation. You are healing our brothers and sisters against the sickness of all. Thank you for protection. My God, they come in the My God, in the name of Jesus. That my God, you are protecting our Father. My God, our community and protecting our nation. My God, against this virus, in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we give you all the honor, we give you all the praise, for we believe, oh God, that my God, every item we have prayed for today, my God has been answered, according to your word, that my God, whatever things we pray to you, my God, when we believe, Baba Ingolo shall have them. And so, God, Baba Ingolo, we thank you. And so, Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise. We thank you, O oh Lord. We give you the honor. In the name of Jesus, no good thing shall be held up, my God, from us. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. No good thing will be held from us. In the name of Jesus. My God, the churches are being planted. 
my God, churches are being planted. My God, all over this country, all over this continent, all over the world. My God, churches of Father are being planted in the name of Jesus. For a healing in marriages, for promotion and work. My God, my God, are not becoming stagnant. My God, your children are rising. Your children, my God, are rising in the midst of this corona, in the midst of this lockdown. Your children, my God, are rising. Signing as Utu, signing as Bom, Colon Colon Man, Joker, Kamenika Chase, Babo into the Sabo. That your hand, O God, is upon your children. Oh, my God and my Father, we thank you, O God, that your hand is upon your children. In the name of Jesus. My God, we thank you. We bless, we, we bless your God. That my God, even my God, those who are victims, my God of, 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 of gender violence. My God, we thank your God that you are healing them, oh God. My God, we give you the praise. We give you the honor in the name of Jesus. My God, we, we thank your God that, Lord, my God, those, my God, so man, my God, my God, are able to get property. My God, they are getting their houses. They are getting their land. They are getting their properties in the name of Jesus. My God, that you are moving forward in the name of Jesus. Pagamanjalo Gebam, Kamal Gachet, Signiges Utumolonke, Signiges Bongos, Kulukulu to a Kamilika Chess, Pagamanjalo Gebam, Signiges Utum, Signiges Bong, Kulukulu and Mandok, a Kamilika Chess, my God and my Father, oh Jehovah Sebong, in the name of Jesus, Mandarabu Santa. My God, say bong, kulukona man, that's soul winning. Babo, come in, that's soul winning, oh God. My God is happening, oh God. My God, soul winning, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Signiga zutu, my father. My God, signiga zutu, nezi bong, kulukona man, donk. Babo, you are again, sega. Queen, sega, get Kamal Gachef. Kulukona man, sabantona baku. Babo, you are getting schools. My God, sabantona baku. Are getting spaces in universities. I'm not about getting my God, passaries, a coming chase. My God, we thank you. Then all spiritual gifts, my God, are manifesting. My God, even the church ministries are growing in the name of Jesus. My God, relationship with you, my God, is getting deeper and deeper in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, my God, as they hear our voice, my God and my Father, we are meeting all our needs. My God, according to your way, that my God, you will never allow the Russians to go hungry. According to Proverbs, oh God, Proverbs chapter 10, oh God, verse 3, that my God, my God, and the children, my God, will never go hungry. In the name of Jesus, my God, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you honor. Let my God, the Russian ones, my God, my God, we never go hungry. In the name of Jesus. We are raising your children. My God, your children, my God. My God will never be a laughing stock. My God, you are raising them, oh God. My God, in spite and Father, despite Baba and this lockdown and Corona, my God, they are rising. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Let my God, your church is rising. In the name of Jesus. Signiges Utumo, Signiges is Bongo. Kulukurana Manton, Kabonga Bantanabako. Nemin Tediabo Nabantanababo. Babo in Golesia Chana Sangabo. E Kamendiga Chesia Bongababo. Utukulukurana Manton again Sega. Babo in Golia rising, your children are rising. In the name of Jesus. Signiges Utumo Gababo. Signiges is Bongo. In the name of Jesus, my God and my Father. Pagamanjalo Gababa. Busa Jalu. Gekamalga Jesuas and Nazareta. My God and my Father, my God, Babo in the Tabaco, they are advancing, oh God. My God, you are manifesting in their lives. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for testimonies, oh God. Thank you for testimonies, oh God. Testimonies all over. Testimonies all over, oh my God. Thank you, oh God. And Father, my God, we promise, oh God, that Lord will bring back glory to you. 
In the name of Jesus, my God, we will not share in your glory, my God. And Father, we will stand and tell people, my God, that it is God who has done it. And so, Lord, we thank you. We bless you when we take the gift. Amen. Kunjengawe, age kunga fani swanawe. Paga manjalo ge baba. Kulu kulu na manjonge. Oh, shakara bosi acha. Yandara bosi acha. Shendere bebe sente. Mi karabu bosi sente. Mi dere bebe si acha. Shakara bosi acha. Si abonga. Si mizu tumu. Si mizu zibongo. My God, zikfanele. Kulu kulu na manjonge. My God, we are a faithful God. We are a faithful Father. Si abonga ge baba. Sing ni gezu tumoloke. Sing ni gezu tumoloke. Zoke. Kosi ama kosi. Age konjengawe. Age kumalingan suanawe. Babo ingwele. E kamelika jesu. Wase nazaret. Si abonga. Kulu kulu etu. My God. Tumisa na zoke itigo zetu. Moe ingwele. Kulu kulu na manjoke. Abalungi leyo. My God. Abasose balambe. Abalungi leyo. Kulu kulu na manja. Abasose. My God. Basta zeke. Abalungi leyo, babo ingwele, abasose bashasege, siyabo nga babu kwa zuguti, maikota malungisa, maikota wa soza labe, eka mendiga chesu, wase nazareta, siyachandaza. More in way, my God, I want to talk to you. My God, there will never be an embarrassment. My God, my God, I saw the balab. Gave a shot, gave a soul, let's call it. They will not, my God, so much go to bed hungry in the name of Jesus. My God, I'm a look, he's up. I want to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. So, I'm going to talk to you. My God, I'm going to talk to you. Hey, come in, Liga Jesus. There shall be more, oh God. There will be more, oh God. My God, my God, we thank you that, my God, we are prospering them in the name of Jesus. My God, they will not sleep on the road. My God, they will have houses. They will have houses. My God, they will have land of their own, houses of their own. My God, we thank you that, my God, you are turning all these things, my God, for the good of those. My God, Baba, you are called by your name. And so, Lord, we thank you that, my God, you are turning all this, my God, to the favor of your children. It will favor your children, oh God. This will favor your children. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. Mandara bo siete. It will favor your children, oh God. It will favor your children, oh God. Sinigesu tumo baba. Sikilo onku tumo lungo lako. Kulukuna manjoke. My God and my Father. Paga manjalo weko se makosi. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. Paga manjalo weko se. Eka mea chesu. Wase Nazareta, my God and my Father. Paga manjalo babo ingwele. E kamen liga chesu. My God and my Father. Sia bonga baba. Kulu kulu na manjonga. Aba kula yoba fuge spesela. Moe ingwele. Miracles are taking place. Miracles are taking place. My God. Aba sebe nanyiwe. My God. Dito zezega. Baba ingwele. Drunk abuse. My God is defeated. In the name of Jesus. Can start with him. My God is defeated. Ge kama liga chesu. Wase Nazareta. Siku nige zutu moge baba. Si tutu moloke. Lungo luako isi bongo zoke. Zinge zako. Fanelo wena wetua. Ukutu nyiswa moe ingoela. Ge konje ngawe. Ge konga lingan suwa nawe. My God and my Father. Sia bonga ge baba. Eka meni liga kresu jesu. Wase Nazareta. Sia bonga sanja sako. Pesu we chukulu kukulu. Kukulu manjoke. Siku nige zutu moloke. Siku nige zizi bongo. My God and Father, we thank you, God. We bless you, God. Sia bonga baba. Ufanelo kutunisu. Ufanelo kubonga. We thank you, Lord. We give you the praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise. Oh, Jehovah. Sia bonga baba. We give you the praise. Thank you, God. We give you honor. We give you the praise. Thank you, Lord God. Sia bonga baba. Uzonki itigo zetu. Kulukuru na manjoke. Baba ingo the same spirit I give you. Kose ma kose ka mendiga jesu. My God, ungu kulu kulu wena. Utesu ni lako. Kulu kulu na manjonke. You are not a man. Babo ingo that you should lie. Babo ingo that you are a son of man. That you change your mind. Kulu kulu na manjonke. O kulu milu ya kweza. Babo ingo la usulua luto. My God, umuta nga shulega. Koto wena usulua luto. Siyabo nga ke babo kwa zuguti. Skonzu kulu kulu babo ingo ele. O nga shulua luto. Sinike za ku utu molonke. Isi bongo zonke zikufanele. Tiko lungu leyo. Ekamalga Kristu Yesu wa Senazareta. 
wena wetu fanelwe ukubonga ufanele ukutunyiswa moyo ingcwele siyabonga inkulu nkulu wena amandla okabantu abakho akhona munye ube ihlekisa babo ingcwele mba kodwa ama prayer chat zabo wena njengonkulunkulu uyakwenza sekwenzekile ngegama lika Jesu moyo ingcwele siyabonga sikunikeze udumo loke nezibongo zonke zikufanele we thank you god and we bless you in jesus name thank you god hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, saints, we thank Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. We thank God again, saints. Hallelujah. And uh, hallelujah. We thank God, Pastor Rani. And uh, uh, I want us now to, uh, I, want, I want you to know that God has heard your prayers and God has answered every prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. He has answered every prayer, saints. And we are so grateful to God, saints, uh, for answering your prayer. I want you to now believe that God has heard your prayer yes, and believe that God has answered your prayer. Amen. According to uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 24, that uh, whatever issues you bring before God, the Bible says, if you believe, then you shall have them. And I want you now to know that we have prayed and know that God has, has answered your prayers. No doubt about it, God has answered your prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time. Hallelujah. Say, yeah. let's go back again to the book of, of Ephesians. It's a Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. which tomorrow you will not meet uh, in the morning. We will only meet at 6 p.m. And then on Sunday, we won't meet at all. Hallelujah. So we won't meet online. Hallelujah. And that, I just want to, uh, we'll only meet, uh, uh, we only have a church service. Hallelujah. So I just want to, I will, I will, I will meet you um, again on this teaching on Monday. On Monday, we call this teaching. So I want to give you something that is going to carry you over a weekend. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Something that is uh, very important. You remember, saints, that uh, uh, the last last night we were dealing with something very, very important. Uh, last night we we dealt with Ephesians chapter two from verse thirteen to verse um, 22 remember this time now we're looking at what um, the the um, 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 uh, the death and the resurrection of the lord jesus what what it means what it did to us remember the day before yesterday which was on wednesday we looked at who we were the picture that god had of us before we came to jesus Hallelujah. and yesterday we now saw what it, now that we are in Christ, who, who, who we are now, hallelujah, in Christ Amen. Jesus. Yesterday we looked into that, and now, and we ended yesterday that now we are now part of the members of the royal family of heaven, hallelujah. Amen. That we are now part of the church of God. That's, that's who we are now. We are part of that family now, hallelujah. Amen. Now we are starting Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 12. I will do it very quick because I want to end it on time. Hallelujah. Please bear with me. Now we are in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 12. And take your pen and the paper. Let us get into that because it is very, very important. It's very, very important what Paul is teaching there. Paul is teaching something. He ended on chapter 2 by telling us that we now belong. We now belong in this family telling us that now God, we now are a dwelling place of God, that our bodies, remember that, that our bodies now are being built together for a dwelling place of God, hallelujah. Amen. That's where we ended yesterday, hallelujah. But now, uh, in chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 12, now Paul uh, does something, He there, there, are, there, are, there are about seven truths there, seven things that Paul reveals which are very, very very important hallelujah. he now remember he ended in in in, in chapter two um 
really introducing us that we now belong to the church. We now belong to the church. We belong to this. We belong to the house of God. We belong to the family of God. He ended right there and uh, telling us that our body is now a dwelling place of God. Now, now he starts this next chapter now by explaining what is church. You see. Now he 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 he. You see the explaining what is church. You see. There is a, a word is used, is using the mystery. Verse 3, verse 4, verse 9. He talks about mystery. Verse 3, verse 4, verse 9. He talks about mystery. You notice now Paul, now he brings in the mystery of the church. Hallelujah. He, he talks about the church as the mystery. You see, he talks about this mystery. Remember he ended in, verse, in chapter 2 talking about we now belong to the church. Now he calls this a mystery. Hallelujah. Yeah. which does not mean it's in something obscure, but it means it's a divine secret. Now, Paul talks about the church as a divine secret. Now, he says, now, this thing that you belong to, you now belong to because you are born again. He calls it now a divine, a divine secret. In other words, the mystery of the church. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, the, speci the special revelation of the truth of the church was first made to Paul. Let me say it again. The special revelation of the truth of the church was first made to Paul. You see, it is Paul who first received the revelation of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Of the church. That's why he calls it the mystery of the church. Hallelujah. He says because the mystery is a divine revelation. In other words, this has been revealed to him by God. You see, in other words, he, he, cannot, he cannot understand this on his own. This has been uh, uh, revealed by God to him. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, he has got this revelation by the illumination of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit now tells him about the change. You see, um, if you read 1 Corinthians again, I think it's chapter 7, uh, uh, chapter 2, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 7 to verse 12, Paul again talks about this mystery, which is a change. So please read it. Now, Paul now, he introduces us and and tell us that the church is actual fact is a mystery it is a mystery because this is now revealed by uh, the holy spirit to him remember before this time there was no there was no church as a church as we know it now paul comes now and he introduces us he says we're now part of this body we're now part of this family but he says now but this is a hit. This is a mystery. Hallelujah. Okay. This is a mystery. But now Paul, he goes on now to talk about the meaning of the church. Now, firstly, he says it's a mystery. Remember, I said to you, this great mystery is not talking about something obscure. But by mystery, Paul is talking about, he's talking about something that is divine secret. Yeah. It's a divine secret that came to him by only by the illumination of the Holy Spirit. The understanding of what church is, it came about by the revelation of the Holy Spirit to Paul. Hallelujah. That's what Paul is saying now in those verses when he talks about the mystery. Hallelujah. So I'm hoping you're having a Bible in front of you. Please read it. Read it dead home because that's what Paul is saying. There. He says it's a, it's a mystery. I want us to read Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Romans 11, verse 25. 25 so that you will see what Paul is singing. That's what he says. He says here, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. You see that? You should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion. That blindness is in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. He says, I don't want you to be blind of this mystery. You see that? Paul talks about this as a mystery you see you will notice later on when we when we talk away when we go on why is paul talks talks about as a mystery now first corinthians chapter 15 verse 51 and another verse there i want to read behold i tell you a mystery you see that paul he says again he brings again the word mystery this is now first uh, corinthians now chapter 15 verse 51 behold i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. He said, I tell you a mystery. What is a mystery now? Paul, I'm talking about this word mystery. 
when he talks Paul about when he talks about mystery, he's talking about not something obscure. He's talking about that that can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit. Paul, his understanding of the church, he got it as a mystery that was revealed to him by God Himself. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me show you again First Timothy. First Timothy. Uh, First Timothy, just to show you, First Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. Chapter 3, verse 16 says, then he says here, he says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Can you see that? Great is the mystery of godliness. You see, Paul, when he talks about the revelation from the Holy Spirit, he will always talk about it as a mystery. So in other words here, when Paul talks of a church, as a mystery is he's, he's, he's talking about it was revealed to him by God himself hallelujah it did not come just it did not come just uh, uh, you know just by being taught by somebody but it came to him by the illumination of the Holy Spirit it's a mystery hallelujah hallelujah but then the question is what do we mean when we speak of the church you know the meaning of the church now because Paul then if then Paul will 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 will, uh, will explain it. What does God mean? You know, you know. We we here we're not talking about a church as a building. We we are talking about a church according to verse ten. You see, verse in, in verse ten. You see that verse ten. Let's say verse ten. Verse ten. Here, let's read it. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. You see that. Might, might be made known by the church. You see now, Paul talks now about the church, but he's not talking about the building. Mm -hmm. He now talks about the church. He's not talking about the, about the building. Hallelujah. But you look in verse 6, he says that the Gentiles should be fellow, should be fellow heirs of the same body. You see there. Mm -hmm. Now, when Paul talks about the church in verse 6, now he introduces the word body. You know, now the body, now he talks about the body. Now the church then is the body of Christ. The church then, Paul is talking about is the body of Christ, not the building. You see, now he's talking about the, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So the church is not a building, but the body of Christ. So if the church is a body of Christ and he is the head of that body, he is the head of the body, then we are the members of of that body hallelujah we are the members of the church members of the body hallelujah hallelujah we are the members so paul when paul talks about the Ephesians now he introduces us now remember he he started by saying we were cast out remember we, we learned that two days ago we were cast out we we're the enemies of god mm -hmm. then he said God was a living neighbor. Yesterday we saw God was a living neighbor. Then we became part of the family of God. Now he's explaining the family of God, but then he starts by saying, this family of God is a mystery. Is a mystery. Now he moves on now to explain that he is not talking about church as a building, but he's talking about us as a body of Christ. And then he says, Jesus, he is the head of that body. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the head of that body but then in the same script the text here ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 to 12 then paul then explains how do we become members of that body how do we become members of that body how do we become members of the body now notice there because that's very important the members of the body verse 6 it says that the gentiles should should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ through the gospel. You see that? Now, how do you become part of the body? It is through the gospel. You see that? You become part of the body of Christ through the gospel. He says the Gentiles themselves, because they've received the gospel, they themselves now are part of the body. Somebody shout amen. amen. So you become part of the body just through the gospel, not through birth, not through membership or joining membership, but through, you become part of the body, but through the gospel. Hallelujah. You become part of this. Hallelujah. Now, notice he says, he says here, now, notice what he says here. He says, this body now, notice what he says in verse 6. This body now is, is comprising at that time, is comprising of Jews and Gentiles. 
you see, is comprising of Jews and Gentiles now, which explains now, now look at me now, which explains now why Paul calls it a mystery. It's a mystery because Jews and Gentiles were not united. Jews and Gentiles before the church came, these were people who were hating each other. But it's a, it's a mystery now because you know, the Jews, when they received the gospel, the Gentiles, when they received the gospel together, they become part of the body. My goodness. That is why somewhere Paul, he says, I think in Colossians, now there is no longer Jew, no Gentile, no longer men, no women. Now we become one part of the body. Hallelujah. So you've got to understand now that when we are in the body of Christ now, there is no longer Verna in the body. There is no longer Zulu in the body. There is no longer Tosa in the body. Now we become part of the same body. There is no longer white. There is no longer black in the body of Christ. We are united in one body. Hallelujah. We are now united in one body. Hallelujah. It was entirely a new thing at the time. Listen to me. It had never been seen before. That's why Paul talks talks about it as a mystery because it was no, it was never seen. It was a it was a completely new thing at the time to see Gentiles and Jews together. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is it. But how is this body or the church formed? How is it formed? It is formed through the gospel. That's verse 6. They were ready. It is formed through the gospel. In other words, by the preaching of the gospel, when the preaching, hallelujah, when, when, when the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit convicts those, the Holy Spirit convicts those who hear, hallelujah, and souls then are, are born again. Jews and Gentiles, and all are baptized into the body of Christ Jesus. Notice that they are all baptized into the body of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. They are all baptized into the body. Now, it's very, very important to understand. Let's go and read the First Corinthians chapter 12. Says, I, my time is bad today, but please bear with me because I want to finish this thing. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 13 says, hallelujah, chapter 12, verse 13, notice what it says, for by one spirit we were all, you see that, you know that, for, for by one spirit we were all, you see, and like all, we're all, now, we're all black and white, Jews and Gentiles, hallelujah, women and men. We were all, hallelujah. He says, for by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Amen. We're all baptized into how many bodies? One body. Whether Jews nor Greek, whether slaves or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. Hallelujah. It's very important to understand that Paul is saying, you know, whether male or female, whether Jews or Greek, whether black or white, it doesn't matter who you are, whether whether Kosa or Venda, whether Nigerian, whether Zulu, whether whatever, whether Twana, but all of us have been baptized, hallelujah, one spirit. It's very important. So Paul is trying to emphasize this, saying that you become member of the, the member of this church, the member of the church through the gospel. It is through the gospel of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing today, saints. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing today. He is still doing that. Look at what he does in, in, in Acts 15, saints. Acts 15, look at what he does. This is what the Holy Spirit is still doing today. Acts 15, verse 13 to 14. Acts 15, verse 13 to 14. That's why he says, And when they become silent, James answers, saying, Men and brothers, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to take to take out of them a people for his name. How God visited Gentiles to make them people of his name. Here he is the saints. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing even today, saints. What the Holy Spirit is doing right now, hallelujah, people are born again. People are washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and become true members of of the church which is the body of Jesus. I hope you understand this. How do you become therefore a member of the church? Not by birth, not by birth. You're not born a Christian but you become a Christian through the gospel. 
through the gospel of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's how you become the member of the church of the body of Christ through the gospel of Jesus. That's why today I can't wait to close so that somebody may say, I want to be part of the church of Jesus Christ. It is through the gospel when you receive Jesus, yes. then you become part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Now notice what, again, what Paul now does now now in the same text we are in ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 to 12 then now he talks about the mission of the church remember he spoke about the meaning of the church membership of the church now he talks about the mission of the church. what is the function of the church in this world what, what is it now it is a twofold function notice verse 8 and clear and verse and verse 10 verse 8 he says Remember, we are now in the purpose of the mystery. The purpose of the church says, Me, who is in the list of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Hallelujah. Then, verse 10 to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. To the principalities and powers in the heavenly places hallelujah mm -hmm. so what is the mission of the church say the purpose and the mission of the church in the world is that man may hear the gospel you see that that man may hear the gospel saints church is not a place for us to come and sit and everything time church is not a place of coming on sunday and and is it's not a, it's not a fashion place church is a place church is is a place organic is a is a vehicle that god wants to use to proclaim the gospel of jesus hallelujah that's what the church is all about it is his aim is for god to use it to proclaim the gospel of jesus hallelujah that people may hear the gospel that the angels and the unfold and the unseen host he talking about the principalities then the powers and the unseen host may may be made known Hallelujah, the manifold wisdom of God. In other words, when we preach the gospel of Jesus, principalities, rulers, and powers, they can hear, hallelujah, that the gospel of Jesus is being, is being preached. Hallelujah. Note, note this, note them. Note here what Paul says there in verse, in verse 8 about note the church's message, the unsearchable riches of Christ. That's the message of the church. Paul is talking about it. He says, the message of the church is the unsearchable riches of Christ. Hallelujah. And the manifold wisdom of God. That's what he says in verse 10. That's what is our the message of the church. Number one is the unsearchable riches of Christ. And two, he says the manifold wisdom of God. Hallelujah. In other words, in the church, the church's job is just is not just ethics or morality or, or philosophy. Or, or politics you see the mission of the church is not just to gather people together for religious purposes no that's not the mission of the church it's not not to put you together no the mission of the church saints hallelujah is to convert people to follow jesus hallelujah the mission of the church is to evangelize the world hallelujah saints look up to matthew 28 verse 19 that is the mission of the church is to evangelize the world Tell them about the unsearchable riches of Christ. Tell them about the manifold wisdom of God. That is the mission of the church. Hallelujah. That is my mission. That is your mission wherever you are. It's not a feel-good place. It's a place of telling people about Jesus. Even right now, those who are sick before they die, we need to tell them about Jesus. They cannot die without knowing Jesus. We've got to tell them that there is Jesus. Hallelujah. And people must, people must know Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the purpose of the church. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what we are here for. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore, our, our mission is to, is to tell people the unsearchable riches of Christ and the manifold wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice what Paul then says in verse 7. We're going to be closing shortly in verse 7. Paul then says, For which... I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Hallelujah. Now it talks about the mission of the church. Now it talks now about the minister of the church. Paul says he was a minister, a servant of the church. Therefore, 
therefore of the gospel he was a minister of the church therefore he was a minister of the gospel hallelujah but the word here minister is not talking about the official sense all true members of the church are ministers of the church all people members of the church are ministers of the church you are a minister you are a minister of the gospel of jesus i am the minister all true members of the church are ministers in other words they are responsible to take and to share and proclaim the gospel of jesus when we say somebody is a minister of the gospel of jesus what we mean by that we mean that you are responsible for sharing the gospel of jesus you are responsible for proclaiming the gospel of jesus this word minister it did not mean a man like me wearing a tie or wearing a collar going to church no you are misunderstanding what paul meant here is that you are a minister i am a minister by minister means that you are responsible for sharing and proclaiming the goodness of, of, of the message of the cross. You gotta tell people around your home, tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's how we become ministers. Paul writes, he says, I became, that's what he says. He says, I became, I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace. That's verse 7. I became a, a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace. That's verse 7. Hallelujah. That, that's a question. In other words, if the question is asked, how are ministers made? The answer is simple. Is that God is it? Maybe you have a question. Pastor, how are ministers made? The answer is simple. Then in verse 7, is that God makes them. You see, God makes them. He makes them ministers, you know. And, and that's why Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, let's go there again. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, notice what he says. Uh, verse, he says, in verse 11, Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to deal with that sometime next week. But notice what he says in verse, in verse 11, Ephesians chapter 4, he says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. He himself, who? The Holy Spirit. Who? God himself. He made others apostles. He made others prophets. He made others evangelists. He made others pastors. Yet he made others teachers. He himself says, no man can make you a minister of the gospel. No man can make you the, the apostle. No man can make you. No man can make you a, 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 a prophet. No man can make you the evangelist. No man can make you the pastor. It is God himself who makes people pastors, who makes them minister the gospel. It is not man, but it is God himself. Hallelujah. So if you are called by God, it is God who makes you that. Not man. Man cannot make you the minister of the gospel, but it is God. All what we do at church, we just confirm what God has done already. Hallelujah. We don't make you the pastor. We don't make you the prophet. But all what we do, we just confirm what God has already done. Hallelujah. Now, Paul says, says I became a minister. You see that? That's verse 7. He says, I became. He says, I became. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, he, may, he gave others. You see, the thing is, it is God saints. You see, no matter how much you like me, but I cannot make you a minister of gospel. God, hallelujah. Now, let us go and close now. And the, and the last thing here is not, not just the minister, because not just the ministers of the church. Then Paul again, if you read down there, then now Paul talks about the marks of the church. The marks of the church, hallelujah. Now Paul talks about something very, very important in the marks of the church. Remember, this portion of scripture now tells us the characteristics of the men and women, Jews and Gentiles, who were uh, members of the church. You see, change, saints, remember, we are now in verse, and uh, uh, we are now from verse 10, right, right down to verse 13. Now Paul, now he talks about, we're going to close on the marks of the church, saints, the marks of the church, the characteristics of men and women uh, who are members of the church, what are they like? Or who should they be like? What are they like? And I want everybody now to listen, but it's very important by now. And now, what are they like? And who should they be like? You know, I want you to judge yourself, you see. 
I want you to judge yourself. I'm going to be preaching the way to look at yourself and see if you are really the member of the church as described by Paul here. What are they like and what should they be like? Hallelujah. Notice the following five marks that should be the characteristics of every member of the body of Christ. Notice now. Notice very, very important. Notice now uh, those who are members of the body of Christ. Number one, captivity. Remember Paul says, he says, he was a born slave of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus. The first thing is that members of the church are, 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 are captured. Are captured by God. Captivity. They are captured by this message. You know, members of the church, number one is captivity. We are born slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's verse one right there. That's verse one here. Remember Paul, he says in verse one, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. You see that? He's a prisoner. Members of the church of Jesus are, 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 are captured. There's captivity. In other words, you, you, you can't come out of it, you see. You become born slave, hallelujah. Born slave of the Lord Jesus. That is why when somebody can easily criticize the church, I doubt if they are members of the church. If somebody can easily criticize Jesus, I doubt if they were ever part of the part of the church. Members of the true church of Jesus, they are born slave. They cannot criticize Jesus. They are born slave. I doubt sometimes I read on Facebook, I see people criticize the church and I, I just fold my hands. I wonder which church they belong to. Because Paul says, I am a prisoner of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So number one, the first characteristic of a member of a true church of Jesus or a true member of the, of the church of Jesus is that he's captive. He's captured. Hallelujah. He's captured. He's a born slave of the Lord Jesus. That's verse one. Notice again another thing here in verse six again. Another thing, another characteristic I want to close now. Another thing is that fellowship. See, He says that Gentiles should should be fellow heirs. See, second thing is that members of the of the uh, of the of the church, Hallelujah, they engage in fellowship. The words here is uh, and share us together. Remind us of what you know of that which we share in Christ. In other words, we share something in Christ Jesus. We share something in Christ Jesus. Believers in other churches, we share something. Believers in other congregations, we share something in Christ. That is why it's important. A true church of Jesus will never stop others from fellowshipping with other believers, you see. Because we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. That's why true members of the body of Christ, not only are they born slaves, but they are people of fellowship. You see, when you see a believer from, from, from faith mission, a believer from assemblies of God, a believer of whatever church, Potter's house, a believer from whatever church, you get excited because there's something in you. Hallelujah. That is in him hallelujah yeah. it's fellowship that's why you remember when mary went to visit elizabeth when they came together sharing the bible says suddenly something inside her began to move you know why because of fellowship there's something in you that is in your brother you cannot uh, you cannot stand aside and criticize them that's why when you see them going through difficulty, the first thing you do, you pray for them. You see what happens when I see another pastor on newspaper, newspapers and I see them on, on, on TV and I see them on all kinds of things. The first thing that happens to him, to me, I cry to God about them. You know why? Because we belong to the same church. I am a born slave of Christ and he is a born slave of Christ. And there is something in me that is in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is important. That's why I always look at someone who can easily criticize a, a believer or a church. And I wonder which church they belong to. Hallelujah. Because true members of the church of Jesus, true members of the church of Jesus, when something wrong is happening, they cry instead of rejoicing. 
they cry instead of rejoicing. They cry because they know the worth of the message. They know the price of the message. Hallelujah. So I'm saying the second thing is fellowship. The third thing they invest eight says. In verse 8, in verse 8, the third thing you see there in verse 8, hallelujah, is not just fellowship, is humility. Then he says, Paul, Paul says, to me, who am less than the least of all the saints. See that? True members of the church of Jesus, they are, they are humble. You see, the church of Jesus should be known for humility. Not pride, but humility. You see, that's a characteristic of a, of a member of the church of Jesus is humility you can't have jesus in your heart and not be humble you can't have jesus in your heart and not be humble saints it's impossible you can't have the real jesus i'm talking about the real jesus now you can't have the real jesus and not be humble hallelujah that's why paul says in philippians chapter 2 i'm about to close now i'm so sorry which time he says therefore Hallelujah, he says, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, yes, yes, yes. Philippians chapter 2, I want to read there. Where is it? Verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, he says, Let this mind be, be in you, which was also in Christ, who, being in the form of God, did not consider the robbery to be equal to God, but he made himself of no reputation. You see that? Taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man, and being being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of Christ. Hallelujah. There is a saints, you know, we've got to understand. He says, therefore, God has exalted. God has exalted him. Jesus never exalted himself. He was exalted by God. Wait on God to exalt you. Don't exalt yourself. Wait on God to raise you up. Don't raise yourself. Wait on God to raise you up. Sometimes we, we, we raise ourselves up. You know, saints, wait on God. True members of the church of Jesus are seen because are seen by humility. That's verse 3. Let me move quickly. Not only that, in verse 8 again, we see something there. He says, um, to me who am less than and the list of all the saints. This grace was given to me that I should preach. Underline there. Another mark there of the of, of the church is, is, is testimony. See, that I should preach. Paul was preaching. True believers, they testify. True believers, they testify. They 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 are not they are not afraid to say, This is who I am, this is what I was. Look at me, but look at what God has done. You see, true believers are not ashamed. True believers are not ashamed to say, there is me, how you see. You know me in that township how I used to live. But look at me. Family, you know what I used to do. You know what I used to speak. You know how, how evil I used, to, I used to be. But look at God, you see. True believers are not ashamed to testify about Jesus. But those who are afraid to testify about Jesus, I wonder if there was indeed a transformation, if they had an encounter with God. If you had an encounter with God, you would never be afraid to tell people about Jesus. See, I'm standing here. I'm not afraid to say, I used to do wrong things, Mina. I was the worst of the sinner. But look at what God has done in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. There is testimony. But notice again, the fifth thing in verse 11, he says, according to the eternal purposes which are accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. The last mark here we see here is acceptance. You see that? Acceptance. You see that? Acceptance. In other words, now we have confidence in approaching him. We have confidence in approaching. We see true believers, members of the church, are not afraid to approach him. See, somebody who has had an encounter with God, not afraid even to lie down, not afraid even to lift up his hands, not afraid even to cry before God, not afraid because, you see, now there's been an acceptance. You see, true believers, you see, when true believers come together, worship, my goodness, my goodness. When true believers come together and worship, my goodness, you see, you see tears on the eyes. No, it's not a, it's a tears of joy. 
tears of thinking where God has taken you from. Hallelujah. Okay. That's a true believer. Hallelujah. Because it's been accepted. You realize, what you, if you did, Jesus did not die, you would not be where you are right now. Hallelujah. And you can't help it but cry before God. Hallelujah. Here's the last one, saints, because of time. Here's the last one, says, I'll leave all others to you. And the last mark of a true church of Jesus, hallelujah, is the might of the church. The might. The might of the church. This is in verse 7. I like this in verse 7. It says, Of which I became the minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given to me by the effective working of his power. You see, saints, the might of his, you know, of the church. The gift of God's grace given to me. And also it says, through the working of his power. There are those people who think that because maybe today the church has become weak, ineffective, and think that the church will die. Says, let me tell you, the church of Jesus will never die. Mm -hmm. Will never die. You, you, your congregation may be weak. You may be weak. You see, but the church of Jesus, your congregation may decline, but the church of Jesus will never fade away. Mm -hmm. Not, not ever. It, there is power, you see. You know, Paul is talking about the might of this church. You see, but the church, but the church will never fall, will never fail, because the Lord Jesus Christ is a founder, my friend. He is a founder. You see, Jesus is a founder. He says, he says in Matthew chapter sixteen, he says, he, he says, I will build my church upon this. He says, then he says, the gate of hell will not prevail. He says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Jesus is the foundation. Jesus is the builder. We are not the builders. Jesus is the builder. He has guaranteed that no power on earth or in hell will prevail against his church. Let me say it again. Perhaps you're missing me right now. Jesus Christ is the founder. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Jesus Christ is the builder. He has guaranteed that no power on earth will ever prevail against his church. Look, look there in Matthew 16, verse 13 to 18. You will see them. He says, no hell, no power in hell will prevail against his church. So saints, you may think the church is going down. Let me tell you, my friend, I don't know who's lying to you. The church of Jesus is going stronger every day. It's going stronger. Hallelujah. Every day, listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. It says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. No other foundation. Hallelujah. There is no other foundation that is laid other than which is Christ Jesus. So what am I saying to you? Jesus founded the church. Jesus is the foundation of the church. Jesus is a builder of the church, and Jesus Christ, if he's a builder of the church, he has guaranteed that there is no power on earth that will prevail against his church. Hallelujah. So, saints, I want to tell you right now, even Corona will not prevail. Hallelujah. And let me announce it right now, saints. Even lockdown will not prevail. Say. Those who think that the church is, is, is affected, let me tell you, the church of Jesus is multiplying even more. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus is growing even more. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even right now, I'm thinking about a place is where we're going to plant many churches. You see, the church of Jesus is growing. Maybe you're saying to me, Pastor, churches are closing. My friend, I've got to tell you now, many new believers are coming to the Lord. Yes. All over the world. The devil is a liar. Yes. Churches are planted all over in China. Churches are being planted all over. Hallelujah. In Arab countries, churches are planted in America, all over Africa, in Cape Town, in the Eastern Cape, in KZN, in Free State, in Gauteng, all over Africa. Churches, the fire of God is coming down. He is manifesting. No, no devil in hell will, hallelujah, will prevail against the church of Jesus. It's not dependent on Zoli. It's not dependent on pastors. If you see pastors on newspapers, if you see pastors 
you know, doing uh, uh, bad things. You know, if you see their names on Facebook, that is not the church, my friend. The church of Jesus is not dependent on them. The church of Jesus will grow long after Zoni is dead. The church of Jesus will grow stronger. The church of Jesus, hallelujah, will forever be growing, my friend, because there is no power on hell, no power on earth that will ever stop the church of Jesus. It is growing, my friend. Hallelujah. It is growing, my God, my friend. God is growing it. He is doing it himself right now. Even as I preach, some are listening to me, are giving their life to Jesus. It is forever growing. That is why I'm, I'm part of a growing church. Even in our congregation says, you will see when you reopen, it will be more people. It will be more people coming to Jesus. I've come to declare right now, in the name of Jesus, churches are increasing. My God and my Father, LBC is increasing. MBC is increasing. Churches all over are increasing. Hallelujah, because there is no power on hell that will ever stop the church of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, when you see, when you see few, few scandals there and there, and you think those scandals will determine the future of the church, my friend, I have good news or bad news to you. No scandal will ever close the church of Jesus because no one is building it. Jesus himself is building it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, saints, that I'm part of a, of a church of Jesus forever growing forever growing, even, say, let me say to you, Corona will not survive. Let me tell you, the church of Jesus has gone through a lot before, has seen the worst change. Say, let me tell you, at one stage, the entire leadership of the church was in prison. People were, people were killed. You see, you read the book of Acts, the, the leaders of the church were, were, were killed. Some, some were crucified, you see. Some were thrown into prison and some were told, never preach in the name of Jesus again, you see. They were told that never preach in the name of Jesus again. Guess what? We are here today. Yes. More than 2,000 years ago, we're still here saying Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. You see, we're still here today, you know. They could not stop it then. Even now, Corona will not stop it. In fact, Corona is on its way to death. It is yes. dead already. Yes. Jesus yes. Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Yes. He's building his church. I'm excited, saints. I'm excited, saints. I want you to have a great weekend. I've taken much of your time. But I, I want you to, to eat the scriptures, eat the word, so that when you read the lies out there, you realize it's lies, you know. You don't believe the lies. Understand that the church of Jesus, it is not getting small. It is not dying. The church of Jesus, hallelujah, it is rising more and more. It is not dying. It is not getting smaller. It is getting bigger. Trust me, saints, I'm telling you now, we, I'm not talking about us, we're going to be planting many, many churches. More and more pastors are raised in our church. We're going to plant churches all over, all over, all over. I, I, I said before, go to buy all over. We're going to be planting churches, you know, because the church of Jesus is growing, oh, saints. Right. Hallelujah. 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 We may yeah. be bearing some believers right now. They are going in, in heaven. Guess what? In heaven, according to Hebrews, they are joining the cloud of witnesses. As we stand here, they are the ones who are cheering us up. You see, the devil thinks that he's killing them. About Israel, how you see, about Israel, Moses, and many others who have gone ahead of us. Guess what? It's not a loss, it's gain. They are encouraging us now to keep on and keeping on. Hallelujah. So, saints, I don't want you to to feel morose, to yeah. feel down, but be excited of the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, saints, mm -hmm. have a great uh, weekend, saints. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, right now, I want us just to pray. I want to pray for you. Time is gone already. Mm -hmm. And just thank God for his oh, way. Won't you just God. open your mouth and thank God. Father, we thank you for your okay, way. We you give you the praise, praise of God. Oh, God. We honor you. We bless you. My God, we thank you. We bless your name. We magnify you, oh God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We worship your name. Mandarabo, Santa, Shakarabo, Siete, Siabongaba, Sinigasu, Tumolok, 
nezibongo zonke zikfanele kulukulu na manjonke paka manjalo kebaba eka mendi ka jesu my god and my father siyabonga baba eka mendi ka jesu wase nazareta we worship you lord and we bless your name my god and my father paka manjalo baba eka mendi ka jesu my god thank you of god to be part of the church of Jesus that is forever growing. We give it a praise, we give it a honor. Thank you for this power. Thank you for the power of God. My God, we honor you and we bless your name in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So saints, thank you so much for joining us. I just want to say to you, uh, don't forget Sunday, tomorrow we're not meeting at, at 5 a.m. We'll meet, excuse me, we'll meet in the evening, but they will not be teaching. We will just be prayer. Tomorrow at 6, they won't be teaching. I will continue the teaching on Monday. On Monday, hallelujah, saints. And, uh, and also, don't forget Sunday, we're going to hospitals. We're going to hospital to declare healing. We go to the hospital to, to, to call upon the name of Jesus, healing those who are sick. After our service, everyone says, please, I want you to choose a hospital. Let us go to whatever clinic hospital and stand outside and just pray. Uh, you decide whether you want to be there for an hour, two hours, three hours, 30 minutes. I don't know. It's up to you. When you're finished, when you sense in the spirit that there is it, and just pray the hallelujah. And if God leads you to pray for others, do so, hallelujah, and make sure because we just want to see which clinics and hospitals have been covered. Please take photos. The reason why I want to take photos because we want to know which hospitals have been covered. Hallelujah. So Amen. please do so, saints, and send them to, to our number. The number is on the screen there, hallelujah. The number Amen. is on the screen there. Media is going to put that number, our, our, our WhatsApp number. You remember that number. Please do so, saints. Hallelujah. Amen. So, saints, have a great um, Have a great Jesus. weekend. We shall meet there for tomorrow and then meet again on, on, on Sunday. Hallelujah. Don't forget Sunday is Holy Communion. We've got a short service. Saints, we've got a short service. We've been preaching. So Sunday, I'm just going to talk very, very brief and then have a, and then have a, a Holy Communion. We just want to declare certain things, declarations on Sunday. So please come prepared. Make sure that uh, you get your family around. I just uh, feel in my spirit that we need to make some prayers for families. So let's make sure that on Sunday we gather with our families and make sure that we pray together. Hallelujah. Amen. So saints, the Lord is good. Have a great, 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 great weekend. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let me just bless you right now, Sister Luana. Hallelujah. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious towards you. And I pray the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace until we meet again all is well with you in jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. god bless you thank you so much amen. god bless you thank you amen, amen. Bye.